Hey everyone, welcome back to Get a Heck Yes with me, your host, Carissa Wu. I have a very special guest, Nathan Chansky, and his little bio is he's a first and foremost a child of God and a husband to his wife, Kayla. I actually just posted an episode about my faith. Uh, Nathan is also a wedding photographer and photography educator based in West Michigan. He has photographed weddings and couples full time for the past three years, which is crazy. I can't believe you've only been doing it for three years with like 20K followers. And within the past year, he has taken his knowledge and experience to the photography education space. His passion will always be glorifying God and empowering others to create the life and business of their full potential. Welcome, Nathan. Thank you so much for having me, Carissa. I really appreciate it. I was just telling you before that I'm like so flattered you've reached out. So this will be such a fun conversation. No, yeah, like you are actually someone that I really admire. And Aww. I wasn't nervous for this episode because you just seem so personable and easy to talk to. But as far as like the excitement level of the guests, like you're definitely like up there on top. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's zero things to be nervous about. Like I am like, yeah, I'm pretty chill. <laughs> so this will be amazing. <laughs> Good, good. So yeah, I wanted to tell you like, congrats on your new podcast. Tell me about it. Thank you. Yeah. So I just started a podcast called Passion with Purpose. And this is like definitely a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, but it's something that kind of came to me, I don't know, like a month before I actually launched it. And I was just like, you know, I think it'd be really nice if I could take, you know, what I'm doing on Instagram and TikTok and just kind of create more of a long form content version of it because there's so much that I love to share. There's so much that I want to help people with. Um, and I, I can't always express that fully just in like a quick reel or like a quick DM to people. And there's certain situations where I just love to, instead of always being like, oh, take a course or like book me for a coaching call or something. Sometimes it's really nice just to hear something from somebody that's more long form content and free. And I know for myself, like I absolutely love podcasts. I love listening to podcasts and I just find that the people that I listen to, I have this connection with them, even though they don't know it, I still know it. And I have this connection that's almost like, it's like this friend connection, like you're hanging out with them on a weekly basis. And even if maybe you don't have certain people who are close to you in real life, who uh, you know are a, walking the exact same entrepreneurial road you are, and you're getting insights from them, you can get insights from people who are on these podcasts. And some of the people we have access to from around the world, it's just crazy to me, like um, how I get access to like their minds on a weekly basis. That just to me like lights me up. So I was like, yeah. that would be so nice to actually connect with people in that way myself. And hopefully people find like some sort of value in what I'm saying. And it was just kind of like a no brainer to me. So I was like, all right, let's do it. Let's just go <laughs> head first. Oh, I'm super excited for your podcast to listen to you in long form because I listen to you in short form with for the audience that doesn't know you like you, you're an educator, but you're really like on reels all the time, giving really like powerful tips about like, you know, like how to get new clients or how to get a good client experience and even editing tips. And yeah, you're just so powerful. But I kind of just started my podcast journey about, it's been like 43 episodes. And I asked this guy that he's been podcasting for a couple of years. I was like, tell me like your experience. And he's like, it's a really like intimate way of networking. So yeah, like for me, like we'll have this powerful conversation and after this conversation, like we'll be connected and I've gotten so much smarter in the last year. Like I was telling my friend, like I could actually read a book for the first time. Like I couldn't actually comprehend a book. It would just be like, read it like a line, like over and over again. And I'm actually an audio learner, but she's like, oh my God, like the neurons in your brain, like connected. And now like you could finish a book, which is so crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. And I think I think what's so cool too about podcasting is just the fact that like maybe selfishly we as hosts or I mean at least for me, like I selfishly really wanted to get myself in rooms with people like yourself who are just so like on fire for what they do and just have so much wisdom and even people that are like way way beyond like my sphere and just like know things that I could never have known just with my own experience and I think that's so awesome to just 
because you have a podcast, have access, if they say yes <laughs> to being on your show, just to have access to those minds and actually be able to talk with them. Just like you're saying, like you just like you develop this like connection with them. And it's like, oh my goodness, I, I don't know if this would have happened if I would never have a podcast show. So yeah, it's such a blessing. No, it's so cool that we get to talk to each other. So you have only been a wedding photographer for three years, which is mind blowing because your work is crazy, like much better than mine. But how, what would you, what were you doing before? And tell me a little bit about like your journey. Yeah. So honestly, it's kind of unfair to say that I've only been doing it for three years because I feel like I've had a camera in my hand, like very casually for, I don't know, like the past 10. But I think what it was is three years ago, that's when I actually was like, okay, let's make this a business and let's actually quit my full-time job and actually pursue it. Um, so for me, my story kind of starts when I was uh, about 16-ish, when I was like about graduating from high school. And I was kind of, you know, just dabbling with a camera and like taking photos of my friends and family and just kind of like hanging out with people. Um, and then I loved how people would react to my work. And I was just like, no way, like this is so cool that people love um, what I'm creating, you know, and just getting those like reactions out of people was just so freaking cool. Um, so I did it a little bit then and just kind of like, I think I had like a point and shoot camera or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I went to college for four years um, and completely put photography or any sort of entrepreneurial mindset on the shelf. Like that just wasn't something in my uh, that just wasn't in something that I thought was a possibility at the time. I was just like, yeah, I would love to, I guess I'd love to do that, but like, there's no way that would happen. You know, everybody in my spheres, they were all going to college. They were all climbing the corporate ladder. They were all doing like this cookie cutter thing that like this, a cookie cutter American dream that has to do with like climbing the corporate ladder, building your resume, going to the big city and getting the big job. And so that's what I was like, okay, I guess I'm going to do this too. I don't really have a lot of um, choice. So I went for, to college for four years and then after that, I came back out of college and I got two different positions. And I remember not at the same time, but just one after the other. And I remember just feeling like, you know, this just is not it for me. And this is not what I'm looking for. And I don't like I, I remember it would come to if ever I wanted to find a new job or something like that, or even like if it was like back in college, if I wanted to find an internship, I just absolutely hated the process of like, applying for jobs and like trying to put the, this fake best foot forward to try mm. to get hired and try to look good on paper and yeah. be ranked by like these numbers that um, reflected like my test scores in school, which had no representation of who I was as a person. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. I absolutely hate this. And I don't think this is really what God's called me to do. And I don't think this is the definition of my true worth. So I remember I just started kind of getting back into photography and I was like, okay, you know, like I see so many people posting on Instagram and uh -huh. this new platform of Instagram kind of makes it possible so that you can share your work and you can show your portfolio and you can connect with people that you never would have otherwise connected with. So I want to try that. So I remember I did that and I, I did so many shoots for free and I did um, so many shoots where I would just pick a couple and I would pick a location and I would just like orchestrate the entire thing exactly how I wanted it wow. and build the creativity exactly how I wanted it. And I remember after a while, um, it, I mean, it didn't really take all that long before I actually started getting people inquiring with me for actually paid shoots. Um, I think it was probably a month after I posted my first bridal styled shoot. And this is the first time I'd ever photographed like a human in a white wedding dress. <laughs> so uh <-huh. laughs> it was like, people were like, oh, he does this. Um, and so once I got to that point, then people started inquiring with me and then people started booking with me. Um, so then once that happened, things just kind of went from there. And I was like, oh, I can actually make a business out of this. And I remember um, about, I don't even know when it was, but I quit my job in, I believe it was the spring of 2019, because that would be three years ago, right? If I do math. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> I went full time. And there were definitely, I will say, I'd love to be the person who was like, and then I went full time and nothing ever bad happened. But that's wow. really not the case for me. Like for me, it was I had to really figure out through a lot of trial and error and through a lot of ups and downs 
what it meant to build a business, to build a brand, to actually run the back end of a business successfully, to actually market yourself, um, to actually be like a healthy, sustainable entrepreneur as a human instead of yeah. just like thinking of it as like the creative and the business owner. Um, so there was a lot of things involved there, but that brings us here to today. I'd say there was a there was a definite definite shift, pivotal moment in my career about a year, a little bit over a year or two years ago. Um, kind of like at the end of 2020. Man, uh -huh. it's so hard as a wedding photographer to figure out what year we're in because I'm like booking because I'm like booking 2023. <laughs> I'm like, what year are we even in? I know, I'm like, what month it is it? I know exactly. Um, so anyway, I remember there was definitely a pivotal moment in my career, and I attribute a lot of it to my faith, where I just had this moment with God that I wasn't really giving my business to Him, and I I was very lost mm. as a result of that. Mm. And so I remember once it actually turned into me, um going to the Lord every day and like surrendering my business to him and like having the synergy of like me working hard, but also looking to like divine providence. Um, it, it worked so much better mm. for me and the things started clicking for me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what brings me here today. And I absolutely love it. I absolutely love what I do, both photographing with my paid clients and then also photographing um, or excuse me, also being an educator in the space within the past year has been just such a, huge blessing and like given me so much purpose. Um, so yeah, it's awesome. I love it. I'm oh, having a great time. Yeah. It's crazy. It's like you kind of grew your business with like, I feel like you have been like in business, like your brand is so powerful, but you did it so fast. Um, when like you had that God calling, is that when you started your education program or like started educating on Instagram? Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of like where I was at at that time was I was even considering like, okay, I just have so much energy and like, I, I just have so much like passion for being an entrepreneur at this point in my career, but I don't know if I still want to be a photographer. Like, should I be a photographer? Mm. Um, because again, like it goes back to who you surround yourself with is kind of who you'll draw a lot of influence from. And I know um, in my social circles, a lot of my um, just community is, a, is, it's very like, th there it's a lot of people who don't really believe that like entrepreneurship is going to be a sustainable lifestyle, especially like as a parent, especially as like a husband or a wife. Like I think there's a lot of people who um, like even I'd say even in my family, like I love my family, but I think a lot of my family kind of were like, hey, are you sure? I don't know if like this is really something that you should be like fully pursuing like long term. Um, and so I remember being like, oh, maybe it isn't like, maybe I shouldn't go into photography, but I found that the Lord really showed me, this is what I want you to stay in. And mm. education is what I want you to start kind of dabbling in a little bit. And I didn't, I will say I did not feel ready at the time. Mm. I didn't feel like I was, um, like adequate to start educating, but it's so funny how I see how the chips have fallen now and like, especially like back then when I was just like in these beginning stages of just like putting out what I know, like you, it's like, you don't have to, you don't have to share anything that you don't know. You don't have to share anything that, um, you aren't an expert in, but of the things that you are an expert in, you can start sharing those things. And as I look back now, I'm really happy that I started back when I did, because when you are building any sort of pivot in your career and you're kind of like, okay, I want to add, like for me, it was education um, that takes some time. And even mm -hmm. before, like I, I haven't even started coaching officially mm -hmm. until just like a month ago, you know? Yeah, so it's like, I saw that. yeah, thank you. And so it's like, it's not like I, I was starting coaching back then, but just to like plant those little seeds. And I would even say to anybody out there who kind of maybe wants to pivot their career a little bit or try something new. Like I think sometimes we think that we have to be perfect at it before we start it, but it's like sometimes you can just start planting those seeds now and start um, just watering those seeds. Um, and then maybe in the future, you'll really see once it starts growing that, that it was meant to be and that you were supposed to start in those, in those areas, if that makes any sense. Yeah, like I started coaching like after 12 years into my wedding photography business. And it was actually kind of hard because I forget all like the basic things, like the things that people ask. And I think it's just like so obvious, but obviously like it's not obvious when you first start. And I'm writing a book and I had to like go back into like 
first year of photography entrepreneur, Carissa Wu, like what was the mindset back then? And I feel like when you actually like learn the process, you're going to learn so much in your first couple of years, like exponentially um, as much as like you do like later in the years. So it's really good to like educate and like having the podcast, like you, you educate and you actually grow from it and you're like learning like crazy amounts of stuff and you're able to articulate it. And yeah, me becoming a coach, like it helped me become a better wedding photographer. So it's, it's a really cool process. Yeah, I love that. It is it is so funny that you say that because I was just reading a book this past week. Um, it's a very, oh, I can't remember that. Oh, it's called like Seven Habits of the Most uh, Effective People. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, something like that. It's like a very popular book. And I know something in there that they talk about is like the best way to be a student is to position yourself as a leader, I mean, or as a teacher. Uh, um, and uh-huh. because they say that like the best students are those who like, are teachers. And so like, if you are a photographer and you a photography educator, um, I do think like, I don't think everybody should be a photography educator, but I do think that for myself and I know like it just echoing what you said, it truly like makes me the best photographer to be an educator, or it makes me the best photographer that I can be to be in the position of educating because it's like, I don't know, it like it holds you to a higher standard. Yeah, it uh-huh. also just really helps you like, hold in and sink in the things that you're teaching and Uh the things uh that you're learning. Um, I don't know. Like, I just think it's such a beautiful place to be in. And I'd I'd say even if you aren't like positioning yourself on an education platform, I think it's still cool. Like if you think of absorbing information as like, okay, I'm going to absorb this so well so that I could teach it to somebody, whether it's like a younger sibling or whether it's like your spouse or a friend or anything like that, because I think it actually sinks into you much more. Totally. Um, I shouldn't be telling you this, but I heard about you like on Lindsay Ronan's podcast, Heart University or the Heart Whatever um, podcast. And I looked at, I loved your personality, obviously, like you're so fun, but I looked at your Instagram page and I was like, dude, I've been doing it all wrong. (laughs) Oh no. What do you mean by that? I just like, I know I just like your feed looks so beautiful, but I, I think I was confused because I was looking at so many coaching Instagrams. So I separated like my photography and my coaching. So my coaching hmm. was looking so like coaching, like just coach like my face. But I'm like, dude, like people want to see that I'm a good photographer too. And I kind of forgot about that. Um, so when I looked at your stuff and you're like speaking in the camera, like to your audience, like three tips, like you're showing your personality in the good light with a beautiful photo, like on the cover, I was like, dude, I've been doing it all wrong. <laughs> oh my yeah. goodness. It's so funny because first of all, I can't say you're doing it wrong, Carissa. I'm sure you are killing it, but I will say I actually have like kind of um, strong opinions on this because, and I have strong opinions, like for the good of whoever I'm talking to. Um, and my opinion is like, I have been in the place where I have run multiple accounts and whether, you know, whether it's like, you know, I ran an account just like off a shoot off that I wanted to try for like a different business that I wanted to try at some point, or I I don't even know, like a personal account and then a professional account. Like I've done all that. And I'm just going to say it is so difficult unless you have an active social media um, manager or a Mm -hmm. team working Mm -hmm. with you. It is so difficult to humanly uh, build an audience on two different platforms and actually run two accounts very well to the best of your ability. And I think that it's also difficult because it funnels your audiences to two different places instead Mm. of one. So instead Mm -hmm. of like your efforts being put towards one place, your efforts are being divided and, and the outcomes are being divided into two different places. And so like, for me, I, like I would be very, very, very surprised if you ever saw like a presets account or like an education account or uh, a podcast account for me. Like I'm just not going to do it because I do not think that it's going to like I for, for me. I know my limits and I know yeah. I can run two of them well. And so yeah. that to me is like I don't know. That's just like my line. But yeah. I know that for other people, um, whether they have a team or whether they're just like freaking bosses like Carissa, there are some people that I know who can run two of them well. So I, I don't know. Like it, it's definitely um, – I don't know. It's definitely up in the air. But 
my personal my personal like uh not opinion but just like maybe suggestion is like think about what you could maybe do if it was all funneled mm-hmm. to one place mm-hmm. i don't know mm-hmm. Yeah, so after I look, looked at your feed, I really got inspired and I, I reached out to you, you know, a couple of weeks later, but I cleaned up my feed. So I started adding like more of my photography photos like to my coaching feed, which is awesome. And me and my husband got in a fight, so I blocked him from Instagram. But <laughs> no way. Yeah. So he actually was like, why can't I like tag you? And then he, I was like, I blocked you. And he's like, oh my God, I, I can't believe you blocked me. And then so he actually <laughs> went back on my feed and he was like, oh my God, like, I love your feed. It looks so dope. And I was really? like, it was such a nice compliment because he like doesn't know anything about my business or cares. So for him okay. to like give me that compliment, I was like, wow, like I felt so like honored. <laughs> You're like, wow, I'm really touched by this. <laughs> yes. I was like such a huge compliment, but I wanted to ask you two questions, a two part question before we get into our hot topic, because I feel like, you know, everything really like came to you easy. Maybe of your personality and your vibrance and your, you know, love for photography um, already in people. But what was your biggest struggle of your business? And then how do you get a heck yes from your dream clients? So it's kind of like a two part question. Yeah, it's really funny because I do not like first and foremost, I don't know if like, (laughs) like, um, I could ever say that anything's come to me easy. Like I Mm -hmm. just have never ever, I've actually always felt the opposite that like, things have come to me very, very difficultly, as opposed to like a lot of people. So my biggest struggle in like, kind of on Instagram, you mean, um, I would say the biggest struggle would probably be finding my voice and my confidence and finding kind of like almost like permission to uh, just be myself, I guess. Um, I think what's really interesting is that there's a lot of people, well, let's just say me, I oftentimes will almost like have to identify with someone else before I give myself the permission to like step into just being who I am and just like step into like what I feel is right for me. So it's almost like I need to like see someone else do it before I'm like, okay with doing it. Um, So I think like that's probably been something that's been like more mindset based, uh, a struggle of like, how do I, you know, how do I actually grow? And like, how do I get into this? Um, while still trying to like, yeah, stay confident. And I think the biggest thing I've learned in that situation is just, you're not going to always find that permission. You're not going to always feel like someone has trailblazed that, that path for you because maybe you need to trailblaze that path and maybe you need to be the person who does it first so that someone else can look up to you, you know? And so I think that's been like really helpful for me. And then also just kind of like, finding if you ever do need to find like confidence and like, oh, like this person did that, I can do this. I think sometimes finding confidence or finding relatability and just like a facet about somebody that you admire, like whether it's like, oh, I love just how bold they are, or Mm -hmm. I love how down to earth they are, or I love that they are showing up even though they've had this disadvantage or something like that. And just kind of being like, okay, like I'm very different from them still, but like Mm -hmm. something about that can really inspire me and I can take that with me and I can kind of use that to propel me to do what I need to do. Um, So yeah, I think that's been like, something that, yeah, maybe I've struggled with more Mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. mindset realm. Um, I think something uh, that gives me, that gives my clients a heck yes from me, honestly, I think it is really just being the best person you can be for them and Mm -hmm. being like the best friend you can be for them. Mm -hmm. And just Mm -hmm. like being as upfront and honest, like There have been times, and I think we've all had these moments with different clients where you've worked with a certain client that is like perfect for you. And you know that like this is quintessentially the type of client you want to work with. And for me, it's couples, obviously. Um, And so like there have been people, there have been like certain couples who I've worked with that I'm just like, wow, you guys are just everything that I want to work with. And it's usually Mm -hmm. like their personalities and just that Mm -hmm. they trust me. 
um, and kind of like finding those people and just noticing yourself working with them and noticing like the extra mile you're willing to go for them and noticing how you talk to them and noticing just like all those little um, nuggets of like the way that you're interacting with them and giving them an incredible experience and then kind of setting that or kind of putting that away and saying, okay, I'm going to take that experience that I gave them and I'm going to give that to everybody, even regardless of like, if they are like my favorite people in the entire world, like I want that experience for that couple that I gave that I want to kind of have that for everybody else. So it's really funny. Cause like if I, something nitty gritty. So if I notice that I am messaging a client, for instance, and they have, um, let's say it's like a friend of mine that just reached out and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love to freaking work with you. I'm so excited that you reached out. What's really funny is like, if I notice myself like remaking my like response, like my inquiry response email template, and I'm like putting different words in than I normally would. And I'm putting different emojis in and all that kind of stuff. I will like save that template, like the one where I was so excited and genuine. And then I will like update my template with that one because I'm like, this is like the actual me. This is the actual excited me. And this is what I want every single client inquiring to feel when they experience me, you know, instead of, instead of just like writing this like standard template that you're like, okay, I think I'm sounding excited. I think this is good to say, you know, but actually getting like, like the actual you and the actual excitement and enthusiasm out of you. And so just kind of like doing that and everything. And, and even like, oh, if you find yourself giving them like an extra little gift or like bringing the bride Starbucks in the morning or whatever, Uh uh just like write those things down and Mm. make that a part of your like standardized process of client experience, you know? So I think that's what has really given me like the freaking hack yes. Like when people actually feel like they are valued and then they feel like I love working with them and they feel like I am like just a friend because photography is a very personal experience, you know, like it's like we're shooting these people's wedding days. We're shooting like them making out in front of our freaking camera. Like this is so <laughs> personal. You know what I'm saying? So I think, kids, the, yeah. I think the more um, authentic we can make it for them, the better. That was like the best answer ever. So <laughs> thank you for that. I think also that kind of ties into like what you appreciate appreciates. So it's like you're so like thankful for them. So you're going to get like more of that same type of couple. I think yep. that's really powerful um, because of time purposes and you're just giving like so much great, um, amazing, amazing tips already. But we're going to kind of speed through like the three tips for how to grow your Instagram. But just tell us like kind of like the number wise, statistically, you have like around 21k followers, but um, like where you were maybe like last year, or like two years ago, and then like, how the hell did you grow it? And then how do we help the audience grow theirs? For sure. So yeah, um, straight up about a year ago, I was at I believe 1400 followers. So 1400 followers about and um, it honestly, yeah, it's like it, it took a year. It's not like it was like completely overnight. Um, but I would say, yeah, it takes time and it, it takes even like the years before that to kind of figure out like what my voice was and like to get mm. my confidence and, you know, to just figure out what I wanted to do in the platform. Um, so yeah, I do have three tips for you. So my first one is build a personal brand. Instagram and social media right now is all about connection. It's all about building that personality and making fee- people feel like they really know you as a person mm. more than just like, oh, I know them as a stuffy brand like Nike or something like that. Mm-hmm, because, mm-hmm. you know, like if you if you get as big as Nike, you can build a stuffy brand like that. Like you've earned that once you've gotten that big. But yeah, yeah. for the rest of us, I do think that personal connection is so important and you need to build that because people like to connect with people. People don't just like to connect with a brand. Um, Number two, I would say have a clearly set goal, a clearly set niche, and then stay consistent with that. I think there's a lot of people 
where they will kind of just arbitrarily try to quote unquote grow on Instagram. And the only metric that they use to grow is really their following count, like that big number on the top of their page. And then they don't really like do anything else with that. They're just like, okay, well, the measurement of my success is whether or not that number goes up or goes down, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I, I think that's a really difficult way to measure if you're, if what you're doing is working, you know, like I think there's people, there's people out there who have less than a thousand followers who make six figures. So what is your goal? Is your goal to build a business or is your goal just to build a following? And I understand there are some people that just want to build influence. That is also, Mm -hmm. you know, something you can harness to build a business, but I would still have a clearly set goal and then exactly know who you're speaking to and exactly know the type of people you're talking to get really nitty gritty on that. And then I would stay consistent. Just just keep just mm-hmm. keep grinding on that path. Don't get distracted by what everybody else is doing. Just keep on your path. Um, number yeah, what, three. Um, I was going to ask you. Go ahead. Go. I'm, like go ripping, ahead. I'm like yeah, ripping. I'm like ripping through these. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hold on. I'm like, one, two, three. <laughs> um, okay, personal brand. I wanted to say first that I li- I watched your little promo video on your website, and it really spoke to me. You're looking directly at the camera. You're speaking to your audience. You're in good light. Your skin looks shiny. <laughs> you look great. Very simple backdrop, and you were showing your personality. And it probably took you like 10 minutes to do, but it was just, it really spoke to me. And you gave your little Nathan, you know, like funny little antidotes and like your charisma. (laughs) So I really enjoyed that. Um, My personal brand, like I've been, you know, giving myself away on social media for like forever since like I was in college, like like decades ago. So I would go on like these these dates on like match.com and like someone told me like, oh, wow, like he knew how, who I was a photographer. And he's like, you are like exactly how I thought you would be. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I know. It's so funny. So it's like really showing who you are. And like uh, the point about your next tip, like clearly setting your niche. I wanted to ask you, like obviously like couples and photographers are your niche, but can you go deeper into who your niche is? Mine specifically? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So on Instagram, it's really interesting because like I said, I will have one account until the day I die. (laughs) Um, So it would make sense in some senses to have two different kind of like an educational niche and, or excuse me, an educational platform and then more of a uh, photography based client platform. But what's really interesting is I actually, if there was another like uh, struggle that I had, it's, it's trying to figure out like, can I market these two uh, audiences at the same time? And what's I think very interesting is this like breaks all the rules of marketing, but for whatever reason, it like still works. When I put out things for my um, for my photography, just trying to attract clients and then trying to attract um, other photographers for my educational platform, they both come in almost simultaneously with the exact same content. And I do more so heavily focus my reels on um, targeting, like, let's say like an educational, like, let's say I target with reels more of like another photographer who's maybe in their first or second year, yeah. kind of debating between whether or not they should go full time or not. But then um, I also with my photo work and just more like posting my photos and more so targeting uh, actual paid clients and kind of like telling stories of me working with clients mm-hmm. and those things. But what's really interesting is that when I post my work, I find that that kind of also speaks to my uh, other photographers out there who might yeah. follow me for education because it builds credibility. It's like, oh, he's actually doing what he says he does, you know? Yeah. And then when it comes to my educational content, I always thought that would be a turnoff mm. for my um, clients. And I was like, maybe this might be confusion. And so mm-hmm, I was mm-hmm. I was considering at a time, I was like, I might have to separate these accounts. Mm. But what's really funny is like, there have been multiple clients that have reached out to me and booked me this 
year. And they told me, they were like, you know, what really stood out to me is that you just seemed like you were an expert at what mm-hmm. you were doing. And you just yeah. seemed like you knew exactly how to, uh, how to do photography. And I wanted someone who knows what they're doing. And then there was this one bride, she was so sweet. She was like, I just thought you were such a nice person giving all these free tips away to your competition out there. She's like, I just, I just thought you were like the best person ever. So I think it's really funny that like, this has actually me getting into education has never hurt my bookings at all. If anything, it is like compounded my bookings and like brought in so many new clients. So no, what's interesting, I saw that from you. I saw that from you and it really inspired me to do the same. Yeah. So what's what's so interesting about that is like, I don't even know if any other time I would recommend doing that. But I think when you're in a situation where you have your industry and then you have your educational platform for the same industry, because they're so closely linked, I think sometimes you can get away with that. Um, so yeah, I'd say my niche is definitely two part. It's one targeting couples in love, whether it's Uh engaged, getting married, and then it's also targeting photographers, especially photographers within their first like two, three years of doing it. Yeah. That's so cool how you do that. Like I'm obsessed. Um, you can take it away with tip number three. Tip number three. Um, so my tip number three is adapt and change, like be willing to adapt and change to just the market, to Instagram, to Mm. what Instagram wants you to do, how the apps are changing. And I think that there's a lot of people that they find that there's going to be, you know, a change and they immediately dig their heels and they hate the change. They're like, I just want what used to be. And I'm really comfortable in that. Um, But I think that the people who are willing to adapt and change and who are willing to get into it and who are willing to like use those tools that no one else is willing to use, like I've been just starting to like go live a little bit more, which is like, yeah, it's terrifying at first, but like Instagram wants you to go live and Instagram is very video based Mm -hmm. now or like reels are obviously really big, like get into Mm -hmm. the video or, um, you know, like even like. The, the other things that Instagram, like I even made fil- like face filters, just like trying to give uh-huh. Instagram like yeah, what yeah. Instagram is asking for and the things that like no one else are doing. Because I do think that when you are utilizing the app in the way that the app creators are intending that you are going to end up growing better and they're going to end up kind of like the algorithm is going to kind of be a little bit more happy with you. Um, And I don't have like proof necessarily, but I do. do, (laughs) I, I really do think that there's going to be an uptick in your growth if you are embracing kind of like this change and that change. Um, obviously, if it aligns with your brand, but I just think that, you know, every time there's a change, every time there's like an added feature, I just see that as an opportunity. I don't see that as like exhausting. I'm like, oh, this is an opportunity that like maybe I can use this and this this will maybe be better than what I was using in the past. Does that make sense? Oh, of course. Um, I didn't do TikTok, um, but I hopped on the real train like really early. So I was an early adopter. So it, it actually like really helped my business. Um, yep. I think one my first reels, they would get like over 10K impressions. Yeah. They don't anymore, but I was just like, it feels so like good, you know, just like, oh my God, like this is, it went kind of like semi-viral or whatever. Yeah. And to um, your credit, yeah. that is so awesome that you got on it early. Like I wish I would have got on the reels train earlier and uh-huh. I wish that I would have been more like, let's do this. Cause I, I was in the camp of people at the beginning who was like, okay, what are these? I feel weird about doing them. I don't know if I should do them. But the people that were like, I don't care. I'm trying it. Even if I make a fool out of myself, like those are the people that really were able to harness um, the, those reels for their growth. And I think it made a big impact on them. Totally. And you, um, like going back to your tip number two, how you're talking about consistency, like I'm all about consistency. So I have my rhythm for my coaching page and I have my rhythm for my photography page. I couldn't get the TikTok rhythm, even though I like have an account, but it's like, I always post a real photography page on Mondays and it's a very similar format. And for my coaching, I just post like some trending sound with like, Hey, I help photographers make money type of thing. 
But I got into this rhythm and like, you know, the podcast posting every Wednesday. So I have these rhythms and it makes it really like easy for me. So I don't feel so like, you know, like squirrel brain all the time. So just like, I got to do this. I got to do this. And I don't really like focus too much on like metrics or whatever, but I'm just like, you know, slowly step by step, my podcast will grow just like yours. Like my Instagram will grow. Like I'll find my target market, but I have that mentality more of like a marathon, not like a sprint. Absolutely. And that's so cool. I think, I think that's the mindset we all need to have around, you know, posting on social media. If something, if something doesn't do well, just take that as data for your yeah. business. Don't take that as a knock to you as a human and you as a person. Just take that as like, oh, okay, well, my audience wasn't like the biggest fan of that. I might try it a couple more times, but if it still performs not that well, maybe I'll try to something try something else. But I think that like when you can look at all of those things as just analytics, as just data, then you can still have the confidence to like move out and try something else. And I think there's a a lot of people, well, I noticed that the people that are willing to look at their metrics just as like data, those are the people who are willing to just keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back. Like I, I always have the thought, like if something flops of mine, if something is like really bad, I'm like, okay, well, I can't wait to get another piece of content out so I can get rid of that one. So like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm just yeah, like, yeah, I'm totally. just like, who, I'm just like, who cares? Like, no if one that even one like listens bad. to it. Like it's just constant, like content. Yeah, exactly. So it's just like, well, just try Just get back up again and just try again. And who cares? Like, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. Like no one's keeping tabs on you and how your reels are doing. It's just kind of like, yeah, it's just all data. We're all it's just trial and error. Basically. Yeah, I had I went live um, when I first started my coaching business, and I was just like tripping over my words. I was sweating. <laughs> I was awkward. It was so cringe worthy. And I keep it up because I want to look back and just be like, "Wow, like look how far I've come." Yeah, and that's I awesome. I-, I saw this girl. She was like in my Miss Chinatown like pageant, but she was so like poised. Like she's beautiful. She's a newscaster. She's an actor. And I went through like, this is a long time ago, but I went through like her, her YouTube, her old videos. Like she looked like Josie Grozy. Like it was, <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, she has, she was horrible. She had come so far um, in the past, like whatever, two, three years. I was like, and I love seeing that like growth of people. So I'm like, yeah. if your work sucks, like put it out there. They're going to see you like in like six months and your, your photos are going to be freaking awesome. And they're going to be like, whoa, like she yep. stepped it up, you know? Yep. And you, you, no matter what the fact of the matter is, is that you went live and you showed up like that's what you should be taking away from it. Not that like, oh, you didn't feel as confident as you wanted to feel or something like that. It's like, you still did it. You still went out there. Heck, the first time I went live, it was really funny because it was pretty recent. It was a couple months ago. The first time I went live, the sound cut out halfway through (laughs) and no one could hear me. And Carissa, I was talking straight up for like 10 minutes and no one could hear anything. People were texting me. People were messaging me. I also, I also couldn't get the messages. So like if there's any live that's going to like biff, like I've done it, Carissa's done it. So anybody else just like, don't worry, you can't outdo us. That's so hilarious. I love that story. Okay. I'm going to go to some fun questions, but uh, what do you love most about your wife? Oh man, there's so many things. Um, I would say, I think I love the most that she is like my quintessential opposite and that she just balances me so well. Uh, she is very, she's much more like of an opposite. I don't know if like the creative brain is the right or the left. I think it's the right. Um, but she's (laughs) very left brained and she's just very like, um, analytical and she's just like, I, I don't know, like she's much more scrappy than me too. And she just like, I don't know. She's such a go getter and Ooh. just do whatever it takes type type girl. And I just love that about her. And she also balances me out because I'm a much more emotional kind of like, uh, mentally volatile sometimes and like all over the place with like my feelings. Right. And she is so like stable, like even keeled, like chill. And I, I just think it's been so helpful for me because being around her and being like just in her presence and all that just, just calms me down so much and just makes Mm. me much more of like a steady person. 
And I just know like that's that's just helped me so much. So that's like a yeah. random one I can pick out of thin air. No. There's so many things I what love she, about her. What does she do? But I love that. What does she do? So she does a lot of different things. So Kayla has been um, a piano teacher. So she oh. teaches like little kids piano. And that's kind of what her degree is in. And then she also is in, um, she works as a hospital admin. So we're not, sorry, not a hospital. So she works at a health clinic in administration. So she's just kind of like um, doing all the calls, like checking people in, different things like that. And then she also does newborn photography and she also does like family photography. So the type of stuff that I'm really not good at. (laughs) Oh, uh, yeah. My um, therapist, I'm not, me and my husband are the opposite too. My husband, my therapist is always like, you're like whimsical. Like your job is like capturing love. Like your husband's like a cop. His life is like black and white. Like literally like cop cars are black and white. <laughs> He's like, you're totally amazing. opposite. Yeah. Like that there's is. no gray area. But so, it's so cool. Cause then, yeah. it's then you get to balance each other out almost, you know? Yeah. Okay. So one more question. And then the final, like, kind of like mic drop question but oh um, man just like your hobbies like you know outside of work carissa this is a question i'm so insecure about really and yes because i don't know what my hobbies are carissa like seriously i feel like i wish i had more hobbies it's it's hard because it's like my hobby was photography like i love doing photos uh and that was always just like my passion and it became my career so in that way i love what i do so much that it's my career and i will say i like absolutely love it it's not it's not even it's hard to find like the fact that it feels like work it's like it really doesn't um but i would say if i had hobbies that i would really like to push into more um it's probably music and um i always used to love drawing as well and yeah i don't know like if they're yeah. like mu- music music is something that's always been like a i don't know just like an outlet for me just yeah, to yeah i see the guitar of, in your background <laughs> yeah exactly just to kind of like i don't know press into when i i i don't i don't know like when you need to mentally process something or anything like that um yeah, i love totally. music and oh, i love, love playing love playing the piano, love singing. Um, and then in terms of like, yeah, I love just kind of more like visual art, like drawing. I'm not a painter. I cannot paint. Um, but I do love drawing as well. So I wish I could get back into those things. I'll have to, this will, this will be like a good inciting moment for me to like actually take time for those things. Cause I yeah. need to. Oh, I love that. So this has been a great conversation. Tell everyone like your lasting advice for wedding photographers, how to kind of be successful and then where to find you and then your freebie. I would say there's nothing that you, it, this, this is going to sound cliche, but I'm going to like elaborate on it. There's really nothing that you can't do just on your own. And, and what I mean by that is if you feel like you're in a rut and you're just like, gosh, I don't know how to get out of this. And I just feel like there's no, there's no way out and there's no, like I, I, I'm unhelpable almost, or like, um, you know, the rules apply to everybody else and, and everybody else can get help and they achieve some sort of mm-hmm. success. But like, for me, it's not going to work. Or like, you know, for me, I just have like this, like abnormal disadvantage that I, I don't know. And I would just say to whoever might think those types of thoughts, um, I would just say to start rewiring your mind to mm. thinking like, Instead of just like, I can't do this, I can't Mm -hmm. do this, start thinking in terms of like, I can do this and I will do this Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and then do whatever it takes to get out of those places. Like there, there, and, and some of it is common sense too. Like I literally, my podcast today is just about like, if you aren't booking anything, get your butt out there and start shooting for free if you have to, you know? So it's like, it kind of just takes you helping yourself and you almost taking those common sense moves to get, to get where you want to go, whether it's like, okay, I need to go out there and shoot more, or I need to be really consistent on social media, or I need to get out there in person and build relationships and connections with people, or I need to hire Carissa to be my business coach, or I need (laughs) to get a, I need, I need to get a online course or something like that. Like whatever it is, like, find what that is and just like follow it and do it with all your might. Like, I think that's something that like, I wish I had grasped earlier. Um, and then where to find me. So you can find me on 
Instagram or on TikTok or on Pinterest at Nathan Chansky. That's just my handle for everything. My website is nathanchansky.co. Pretty simple. I have a free reels workshop and this is basically like, it's kind of like a little bit of a dive into how to go from just creating reels and putting them out there to actually getting bookings from them. Because I think for a lot of photographers, it's kind of like, okay, I guess I'm just supposed to shoot these out here and I'm supposed to like magically get bookings. But what I do is I really walk you through, first of all, the mindset behind creating reels And then I walk you through like how to funnel people from first exposure as a cold audience to reels to actually getting them in like your sales. And then also um, the last step is just kind of like, here's different types of reels that I think you should be creating and just kind of idea generating with you. So there's a ton of information in there and it's completely for free. Like I'm not even selling you anything at the end of it. So um, dive on in there. It'll be so awesome for you. Thank you, Nathan. We did it. Awesome.